Okay, here is, uh, well this is going to be my final um, attempt at this replication because uh, the results are the same no matter how we make the circuit. First off, uh, Meg's pointed out a couple of mistakes. One, we're supposed to have a cap here as well. Um, without that resistor, pointless putting a cap there because our input uh, signal, current voltage, AC waveform will simply drive that cap to whatever that value is. So we've put a uh, 10 ohm resistor in here. Um, this is so we can wind our uh, frequency up and down until we gain maximum amplitude um, across our bulbs there, which would indicate the resonant frequency. This cap seems to do the best job. Um, but as you'll see a little later on, quite um, useless indeed. All right, turn that meter back on, it's just tripped out. Um, turn ratio is supposed to be exactly three to one. So we've wound a new coil. We have four turns on our yellow, 12 turns on our red, gives us a three to one ratio. At the moment, both bulbs are about equal brightness. Um, you can see on the scope, have um, 80 millivolts across one CVR and 84 across another, which is indicating milliamps. So it's 84 milliamps on channel 2, which is across our yellow turns. So that's the current flowing through a yellow coil there, and 80 milliamps flowing through a 12 turn red coil. Um, first, you cannot tune this. To a resonant frequency using both coils. Both coils are of a different resistance value and a different inductance value and so a resonant frequency cannot be achieved regardless of the um, 3 to 1 ratio. So, um, or our divisional ratio there. So, um, if I disconnect one coil I can bring one into resonance um, and if I swap it over to the other coil I can also bring that into resonance which is at a different frequency and so when you have the two together it just turns to mud. Uh, 4.64 kilohertz is where we get our maximum amplitude of current going through those coils and the maximum brightness across the two bulbs. Our total combined input current is 265 milliamps with this circuit tuned to gain maximum amplitude out of both coils. You'll also notice that the current is still in phase and it's not 180 degrees out. We can check our invert is off on channel 1 and our invert is off on channel 2 and of course both ground leads are together and each probe is across each resistor and there is um, no 180 degree space shift in current the current through both coils is in phase uh, what else can we say about this oh yes so um, we had to add a capacitor there, which in this case is not going to help you out much at all. 265 milliamps with the cap connected. I'm going to cut the cap wire now, like so. Now 197 milliamps and the amplitude has increased. So in this case the cap is killing the circuit. So um, we use less power in and get more power out without the cap in this case. So in other words our cap was dissipating some of that input power. So those are my, those are my results. Someone may have some different. I'm not sure how anyone is getting current flowing in two different directions when regardless of how I have these two coils in phase or out of phase with each other 
as far as the winding direction goes, the current always remains flowing through both coils in the same direction, as we can clearly see. So that's it for me on this one. Um, I'm going to throw it in the bin and get on with something useful. Thanks for watching guys.